All right, guys, Jeff and Tammy here again. Today we're going over towards the Bryan area, and we're going to meet a man named Arvin. Now, Arvin's 93 years old. We met him through uh, my dad's church. Uh, Arvin's been going to this church back when it was United Brethren, I believe. We'll find out today in the interview, but he's been definitely going to this church since he was 16 years old. He's 93 now, so... And I hear he's got a 37 cord, like the cord Duesenbergs. He's got a 37 cord, and they only made the cords 36 and 37, so you might get a chance to look at that, too. I don't know. But let's go check it out right now. Like you said, today is the first day of fall. Yep. Absolutely. Come on in, sit down. Okay. Is there anything I can get you both to drink? No. I think we're good. I'm good. Are you good? Where do you sit? I'll sit wherever you want me to sit. Where do you usually sit? I usually sit here. Okay. Works perfect. Mr. Arvin Byrox, correct? Right. And you were born? 1928, November the 14th. And that was in Bryan, Ohio? Bryan, Ohio. Williams County. At the, what was the hospital like then? I wasn't born in a hospital. I was cool. born at home, 713 West High, or Southland Street, pardon me. Wow, is the house still there? Mm-hmm. That's awesome. So um, tell me a little bit about like what Brian was like when you, you know, that you remember as a kid. What did the kids do? What was the size of town like? That sort of thing. Well, generally, the, the um, things that they played and they did uh, were uh, ideas that they had come up with because back in those days you didn't uh, you didn't have the things that you have anywhere near what you have today. Number one, there were two reasons. Number one was the cost of things. Yeah. Um, my my father worked at the Arrow, hmm. and uh, at and uh, what did they make? Nineteen thirty. Well, they made uh, lubricating equipment. Okay. And uh, he uh, he was paid thirty five cents an hour, okay. and uh, there were six of us in the family: mom and dad, and and four of us kids. Yeah. Wow. The youngest being born in 30, 1933. So your mom and dad were always around as you while you were growing up. Oh yeah. Very cool. Yeah. So did they take you to church? Uh, mother did. Okay. Um, my father come and go on that because he he was uh, in the First World War and he was gassed. Mm -hmm. And um, just to make, a, uh, make it clear that once we moved out here in 1946, uh, here at Williams Center, mm -hmm. uh, my dad attended church with my mother just as regular as regular could be. Good. Yeah. Very cool. Very nice. So what was Brian, what was Brian like? It was a smaller town at that time, right? Brian? We, well, the courthouse has been there since 1889. Okay. That's a, how many years after the church in William Center? The, the church in William, the Asbury's, how many years older than the. Than 15. The, 15 years older than the. So is William Center older than Brian? Oh, yes. Okay. So William Center was first and then Brian. William Center consisted of Williams County. Okay. And set in Defiance County and a portion of what is now Fulton County. Okay. They took the east section of uh, Williams County and and the, and the uh, west section of Lucas County and, De and made Fulton County. Okay. And then they took, uh, Williams Center was the center of Williams County, right. but they took the, the uh, side. south part yeah. and made, formed Defiance. Yeah. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Just because of it was so rural area, or is that why they did that? It was a big area, but they needed to divide it up because of the probably the rivers and the canals. I'd say. Well, we didn't have any canals around here. Defiance did. Defiance. Yes, Defiance yeah. did, but yeah. not not right in this area here. Not not Williams. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. No. That's maybe why they divided all that up because it was getting more. Con um, I'd say Defiance was probably with the when the canals came, probably got developed more. Well, <clears throat> this this area was 
was uh, developed because of uh, Matt Anthony Wayne. Okay. I don't know whether you read about him in history or not. I've heard of him, and I know they got yep. a few and different you, things going Fort on. Fort Wayne's named after him. Mm -hmm. Fort Defiance, he, he came up from uh, the southern part of the state and uh, formed Fort Defiance. Okay. And uh, as a matter of fact, if you get down there at the uh, where the original fort was, yeah. you will find a, a marker where the boundary for Canada and the United States started right there at Defiance. Wow. Oh, yeah. There's a lot of history around here. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying learning it. You know your history. And you do, yeah. Well, I've been here. Yeah. Why? Come November, will be 94 years. 94 years. Wow. Right in this area, huh? Mm-hmm. Very cool. So, you grew up in, in Bryan. What, and the kids played, basically, is that how... Uh, Ohio Art started. They're, they make a lot of toys, and that's in Bryan. Is that because they were, I mean, did that move in? Do you remember when that moved in, or has that always been there? No. That, well, as far as I'm concerned, it's always been there, yes. Oh. Uh, it was It was formed before I was born. Wow. Yeah. And uh, the uh, Winsler family is, is uh, responsible for that. Right. And they're from this area, too, then. Oh, yes. So they, they started that because they were from here. Well, well, I mean, they started it, it here because they were from here. People don't move around back then like they do now. Right. That's what I'm saying. A lot of businesses came into a town just because they thought it would work there. But they actually were from this area and started that business from here, which is different than what you see now today. Mm -hmm. A lot of businesses come in. They're not from that area. They just. Well, they in. bought into. Yeah, they bought into it. Right. Mm hmm. Very cool. So, um, what were you in any organizations, any Boy Scouts or anything like that? As a kid? Yeah, Boy Scouts. Oh, cool. Yeah. Boy Scouts, and then what, did the church have groups too? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. So, you were very social, even though it was a pretty rural area around there? Oh, yes. You, you, made, you made do what you wanted to uh, entertain yourself with, like uh, an old pair of roller skates. You could make a, you could make a hand cart to go down. You take the front part and the rear part, yeah. and you nail it to a board and have a stick up here with a cross piece for a handle. You got a scooter. You got a scooter. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. You guys were creative. Well, you had to be. Yeah. You had to be. Yep. Absolutely. You when you're making you're you're the breadwinner. See, <clears throat> my father was working. My mother had a teaching license, mm. but when the war came on, the first World War, I'm talking, not second. Yeah. Things got a little different, and it was hard for people to. After the war was over, it was hard for people to get a job. Yeah. And. Uh, my mother could not teach, although she was qualified to teach, because my dad had a job. Well, now, if my fa father would have had a job, my mother could have gone back to teaching. Yeah. That's the way it was. Right. One person worked. How did I find that out? Well, I was a kid. And I thought, I, I didn't understand why my mother could teach. She had a teaching license, yeah. but she was not teaching. And I said... Why don't you get a job teaching? You know me. I'm thinking about there's more money coming into the family. And sure. You'd be a little better So on and so forth. See? Yeah. Well, we all would be. Yeah. yeah. She says, I can't because your, do your dad has a job. See, that was during the Depression. Yeah. She would have took it from somebody else. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. So you, you grew up during the Depression. I grew up during the Depression. Lived through the Second World War. These people today, they get hit with something like that. Oh, yeah. Look out. <laughs> yeah. I mean, rough, look at the people that can't survive because of the pandemic. Yeah. It's true. You're right. We need to toughen up, don't we? I agree. <laughs> I agree. Toughen up is right. What was your first job? Do you remember that? 
Oh, yes. Okay. My first job was delivering newspaper. Oh, and what was, who's the newspaper? Was it Brian Times? Well, you had the Brian, no, no, you had two papers in Brian at that time. Okay. You had the, the Brian Democrat and you had the, the, uh, uh, can't think of that right now. Brian Press, that's what. It, okay. You got to give me a little time. That's okay. Get this gray You're doing good. <laughs> we'll knock the cobwebs out. Okay. And then uh, we delivered the uh, Toledo Blade. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that was all the news back then. Eh? Newsies and newsboys. You were one of the newsboys. Yeah. Very cool. Second job I had was uh, stock boy for the Morris 5 and 10. Oh. Mm -hmm. and, then, and what's the Morris 5 and 10? Was that a grocery store? No. That was gas a, station. No, uh -uh. Morris Five and Ten was a, a a novelty store. Oh, yeah. So what kind of stuff did they sell? Like new, them? you remember new newberries? No. Okay, that was another one. Wow. But what, they were bigger than Morris Five and Ten. What kind of stuff did they sell in there? Oh, just brick brack things. Um, like home decor. And things yeah. Like that. Oh, cool. Yeah. Like Sears and Roebuck's and stuff like that later. Same time. That was my second job, and my third job was delivering uh, telegrams for Western Union. Nice. Did you do that driving, or? No, no, bicycle. Bicycle. And you drove all around Bryan and William Center? You, no. Just we were located in the Bryan area. Anything, anything that was out of town, if they had a phone, it was it was delivered that way. Oh, very cool. Mm -hmm. So you drove your bike all around Bryan then. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know Brian pretty good. And I heard you know about cars, too. So where did that come into play? Uh, it's a by-roads thing. Oh, everyone in the by-roads has been around cars or something? They work no. there or work for G GM? or? No, no. I have a nephew that won a scholarship to uh, uh, GMC, or uh, yeah, GMC, General Motors. Yeah, and uh, refused wow. to go. He wanted he wanted to do something else. Yeah, and uh, became very proficient at it. Yeah, good. A man that made six figures. Wow, that's pretty good for a nephew. That is really good. What did he do? He was a mathematician. Oh, very cool. That's smart. I love math because they don't. It, numbers don't lie. Nope. You can't fool them. They're there. When he, when he became a chartered financial analyst, might have been this. It's okay. That's good enough. When he became a financial uh, chartered financial an, uh, analyst, yeah, there were only three hundred in the country. Yeah. Yeah. That's wonderful. So, how old is your nephew now? Uh, just had a birthday. 69. Wow. That's impressive. Oh, Very yes. Cool. So this house out here, is this something you purchased then? or This house here? Yeah. No, my wife and I build it. Okay. Oh, wow. you and your wife build it. So you, let's get back. I'm skipping ahead. You met your wife when and how? Well, you should have been here for the memorial service for my wife. Yeah. I told the whole story. I should have been here. Well, I was um, um, I was friend of, of a kid that I graduated with. Although we did not run around together, other than he and I both delivered uh, Western Union telegrams. Oh, cool! And um, after we graduated in 1946, he uh, decided to go to Western Union School and become a manager nice. and um, I uh, went over and believe it or not I had to take an aptitude test to pump gasoline really for the Standard Oil Company hmm. never forget the gentleman <laughs> um, anyhow um, Harold uh, uh, as I we didn't call him Harold he had red hair and we called him red of course yeah and uh, he he was uh, going with a girl that was a uh, 
nurse's aide up here, Brian. She was from Pioneer Ohio. Yeah. And um, he'd send me a wire. He'd say, I talked to Shirley. Well, I sent Shirley a wire, and she said she could come down on such and such a night. Wondered if you get a date and come down. Well, I wouldn't date anybody. Yeah. So, anyhow... This one particular time, I had done, we had done this a couple of times, and this one particular time, he sends me this wire, so I go back in, and, and uh, my wife-to-be was, um, I didn't know it at the time, was working there. And um, I uh, so I sat down, and I wrote a, a, a wire to Harold, read, and, I said, yeah, I'll pick Shirley up and we'll be down on such and such night at such and such a time. And I said, and while you're at it, see if you can get a date for me. <laughs> well, Fern looked at that and she said to me, she says, what's the matter with you? Can't you get your own dates? And that started it. Yeah. And it lasted for over 70 years. That's awesome. Yeah. Very cool. Right there they are. The one second from the left is her graduation picture. This one? Let's no, see. no, no, right there in front of the TV. Oh, right here. Yep. Oh, okay. There she is. That's her graduation picture. The next one, that's that's the church. She was beautiful. Oh, she's lovely. You betcha. Yes. The, the second one. The uh, third one from the left is our family. My wife and I and the three kids. Sam's the oldest in the center. Nova is on the left. She's second. And Candy, or Cassandra, is the third one on the right. And uh, they were all born seven years apart. We didn't plan it that way. Just, just the way God sent us. That's <laughs> how ours are all five years apart. Is that right? Yeah. There you go. Now, clear on the right is the church we were married in in Fallensby, West Virginia. She was from Fallensby, West Virginia, in between uh, the panhandle of... Uh, you went uh -huh. back and got your picture updated. There. That's really cool. That's then on the left, take a look at that one on the left. That was taken, I'd say, an hour and a half before she passed away. Really? Yeah. Yep. Her. She niece, still looks good in that picture. She like. Looks like an angel. Yeah. Well, it wasn't long, and she was. Yeah. Yeah. Her niece and nephew, her, uh, on her sister Vera's side. We're here, and her uh, nephew from uh, from Vera's side. Uh, we're we're here. We just gotten done making apple butter, and thank goodness it happened that we got done early. We got a way of speeding it up, yeah. so to speak, because she sat here and talked till six o'clock with them and I was surprised how how sharp her mind was uh, she'd been going downhill memory wise mm -hmm. and um, uh, they left at six o'clock and uh, shortly after they left she said I've got to go to the bathroom I said you want me to help you she said no I'll be all right so I went out to the kitchen to get supper around because I was, at that particular time, I was I was doing everything. I was doing the wash, and I was doing the cooking, and and doing the finances. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was out there in the kitchen getting supper around, and she hollered at me. And she couldn't she couldn't get back here by herself. So I finally got her down to her chair. And, she sat there for a little bit, and I tried to get her back in here to her chair in here. We didn't make it. Hmm. By, well, before 7 o'clock, she was gone. Wow. Last three words she said to me, hold my hand. Oh. Yeah, and that's what I you did. You said forever. 
Then you have to turn yep. it off and hold it forever. But my oldest sister and I saw our mother pass away. I don't want to go through that again. If I don't have to. Yeah. And I sure hope I don't. And at my age, it probably won't happen. I, I, I sure hope it's none of my kids or my grandkids or my great-grandkids. Sure, that'd be tough. I'd, hard on. Yeah. I'd say losing a kid would probably be the hardest thing you could have anybody could ever go through. I know spouses are hard too, um, especially when you've been with them 70 years. Boy, that'd be tough. But I'd say a kid would be very hard to deal with. I would say. I would say so. Yeah. How I many would... grandkids do you have? Grandchildren? Yeah. Eight. That's awesome. One grandson, all the rest of them were girls. girls. Wow. Now, great-grandchildren, it's the other way around. Got four grandsons and three granddaughters. Wow, you have great-grandkids, too, right? Oh, yeah. Wow. Very cool. So what do you think was the most um, exciting or predominant thing that you've ever experienced in your life? If you'd say... If I were to say the, the most uh, thing that happened in my life was when I was 11 years old, I had pneumonia. Mm. And at, at that time, there was no such thing as myosins or antibiotics or penicillin or sulfa drugs. My, uh, they tapped my side three times up there at the hospital, and the third time they said, we're going to have to put a tube in your side. Wow. And uh, I have a scar on the right hand side of my chest wall. That's pretty good size. And uh, that's what they did. Hmm. And then my dear mother had to come in every day. She'd make up a pad out of cotton and gauze and put that on my side, pull that tube out about an inch, put the safety pin back in it so it wouldn't go back into the chest cavity and cut it off. She did that for over a month. Wow. That tells you how long a tube was in there. Yeah. Wow. And that's how they treated pneumonia? I mean, bad pneumonia back then? I would, yeah. Wow. Uh, I uh, was having some trouble going bowel movements and and uh, my wife came in and she it was about one o'clock in the morning she said are you any better and I said no and she said you get yourself out here we're going to the ER mm -hmm. and went in and the young fellow was the doctor at the ER and uh, he says to me he says what do you think about medicine today I said, well, you people have it easier compared to the older doctors. Well, what do you mean? I said, look at all the equipment you have. Yeah. I said, I had pneumonia when I was 11. I said, there was no, there was no, none of the things like I told you, any antibiotics or penicillin right. or sulfa. Yeah. What'd they do? I said, well, they wound up putting a tube in my side. Yeah. And I, I was rolling around without just a t-shirt on because they'd take my shirt off. Yeah. To do an x-ray. Yeah. And uh, I showed him. Well, he says, I can't believe they did that. I said, well, I wouldn't be here if they hadn't. All right. The nurse says, he's a survivor. Yeah. <laughs> you are. I am. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you seem really healthy, too. I mean, I know people lot younger than you that are dealing with a lot of things, so... You've done something. I've done. The, Did you exercise a lot when you were? I mean, like, you you worked. Yeah. When we were building this house, I worked. I worked for forty eight hours at my job, and then we we worked till dark, sometimes beyond building this house. Now, where did you learn to do the the building? You just learned from family and friends. Where did you learn how to build a? 
just from family and friends. Yeah, picking it up along the way. Everybody yeah. worked all the time, so way the kids helped too, huh? <laughs> the only one that was around here then was Sam. Huh? Yeah. And he wasn't old enough to help. Yeah. We built this in the early fifties. Wow. Yeah. Very good. Very nice. I love it. Well, it's it needs painted. It hasn't been painted for years. Yeah. Um this is plastered. This is not drywall. Yeah, it's plastered. We debated, we debated between drywall. I love the crown. I can see it. The, the, and the uh, Hunts oh. Grimm did that. That's really nice. They do that with a bowl. Mm -hmm. I watched them do it. I watched them do it before. It's pretty impressive. I had, I I had put all the, um, the uh, lath. Of course, it, they were two by four sheets. Yeah. At that time, okay. I put that all on, and and Hunch Grimm says you put a corner right in every corner, and I said, what do I do about the above the fireplace? And he says, you get one of the big sheets and you put her on there, and you'll never have any trouble with it. And uh, you I, don't. There's no cracking. Nope. I don't see any cracking anywhere, which is odd for plaster. I mean, most of the plaster I've repaired plaster. Most people want you to tear it out, put drywall up. I have repaired it, but. It's always cracked. I mean, this is nice. You did a good job. That's because you put boards in every corner and a board on top of any headers. You did what he did. He told you. I, to I did what he told me to do. He was a he was a good plaster. I can see that. Oh wow, he's got a smartwatch. He got a smartwatch. Well, <laughs> my one of my son-in-laws gave that to me. That's cool. That's you just good. hit it to show That's off. That's good because you know there are so many people that don't have their phone on them. Her dad had his. his My dad his had phone. a cell phone and he didn't get around on only on a cart mm -hmm. or a wheelchair. Mm -hmm. and there were so many times he did not have that phone on him and he needed it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. One time he got stuck outside and couldn't walk and he drug himself back to the house. Oh my goodness! And his knees were all scraped up. Oh sure, bloody, as bad. And he, we told him, we told him multiple times to keep his phone on him. He didn't listen. So I'm glad you had that. Yeah. Well, I, I, I said to my son-in-law, I said, "What about your son?" He says he already has one. Mm -hmm. So, then I got, I took this. Yeah, it's a good one. Nice. It's good to have. Nice. I thought it was impressive. Not, you know, you got something a little. Uh, uh, more modern, I guess. Some people are not into that. I think it's great. Well, I'll be very honest with you. That thing's a lot smarter than I am. <laughs> or at least they think it is. Oh, it is. It probably is. It? Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah, you can... You, this Just like this thing here. It's got a lot of information. It's not smarter than you. It's It, it retains... It, it holds and retains information at, at your fingertips, but it's not, it doesn't have wisdom. It oh, no, yeah. no, there's no wisdom. It in might it. be smarter. It's not wiser. Well, it, it, it is. It might smarter. be smarter. It's not wiser. Yeah. It, it, it's only smarter than what's, what's been put into it. <laughs> yeah. 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 It, it, it retains information better than we do. Maybe we're talking about, um, problems that people have, uh, health wise and so on and so forth. Yeah. Uh, I fought uh, dizziness for ten years. You did. Oh yeah, I I. They haven't figured out why. Oh yeah, I know why now. Okay. What yeah. It? Well, it's vestibular nerves, and they're they're set in your skull. Okay. So, the doctors told me you go over there to Dupont Road in Fort Wayne and see this group of people. So I I went over there. My friend, my friend and I drove our car over. And um, I knew I was in trouble right off the bat. I was 84 years old, and they told me they were going to retrain my brain. Oh, boy. And I did what they told me, and it got down to, I said, what, you know, how, how much do I have in, in, in these nerves? Yeah. Well, they said you have 13% in this ear of what you have in this ear. Mm. So my next question was, how much do I have in this ear? Yeah. 
Yeah, that's a good question. I'm not. You know what they told me? Mm -hmm. We don't know. Then I said to myself, how can they tell me I have 13% in this one? Right. When they don't, of what I have in this one, when they don't know what I have in this one. Right. So I it's told hard. my wife, I said, that's it. I've done what they've told me to do. I said, we've gone back and forth between here and DuPont Road. And I said, I'm done. Yeah. I said, if I have to be like this, then I have to be like this. So I've also been plagued with one other thing, and that's nosebleeds. Mm. I have no idea when they will happen. It may be in the middle of the night, and it may be, it could happen right now as far as that part of it's concerned. So you're so, still, you still experience dizziness now? Yeah. Oh yeah, oh. that's that's never going to go. That's, that's never going to change. Eight. Okay. My and oldest. Those bleeds have happened since. Hmm? And your nosebleeds have happened. Your old. Oh life no, has... that's 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 happened for years. Okay. That the two are not related. Right. Okay. So, I said I I said to my wife I said um I'm going to go up to. I used to go. When I get a nosebleed, get a cauterized. Yeah. Well, you, you, in a doctor's office. Well, they won't do that anymore. Right. You got to go to a specialist. Really? Yeah. So I went to the specialist up here at the hospital, your nose and throat. Yeah. And I told him the story like I just told you. I sat in this chair, I was watching television, and this old girl started spinning like this, and I'm. I said to Fern, I says, I'm going to the bath or the bedroom and lay down. She says, I'll help you. I said, just stay away from me. I said, I, I said, if you, if, if both of us fall, I said, I can't help you up. Right. And you can't, you certainly can't help me up. Right. I'll just knock you down. And I just crawled on my hands and knees back to the bedroom. Hmm. And they gave me stuff. And then, of course, wound up sending me over there. Yeah. So I go to this ear, nose, and throat specialist to get my nose cauterized. I tell him the same story I just told you. He says, it's simple. I says, how simple is it? He, if they're not even, you're going to be dizzy. Hmm. So that's it. So how, you can't ever get them equal. So you're just going to go dizzy sometimes. Hmm? You, you could just go dizzy sometimes. I'm dizzy all the time. I'm not dizzy sitting. I'm not dizzy laying in bed. I'm not dizzy behind a wheel. Did you get me on my feet? Walking around. This flat floor, that's not bad. Yeah. Out in the yard where it's uneven, look out. If you, yeah, if you hit that. I see what you're saying. Step so in a hole. Equal, equilibrium and stuff, yep. Step in a hole, you're in trouble. Oh, yeah. Or even any other, even a step off. Mm -hmm. that quick like off of a curb, yeah, yeah. you have to be careful. Yep. And I can see that because sometimes when I do that, I'll, I don't get dizzy, but I'll feel pressure in my head. So I could see if something's off, mm -hmm. that pressure would would transfer to dizziness to, to if it was unequal. Because I do get pressure. If I step off of something and you don't think about it, you step off and you hit that ground real hard. You feel that pressure in your head. Mm -hmm. So if your equilibrium's you. off, it's going to transfer to dizziness. Yeah. Wow. Oh, yeah. I have to watch what I do. I would say. I sit here for an hour, and I have to watch when I get up. Yeah. And dark, you're done. Yeah. Yeah. You, 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 you're getting... I have to have a light on to see to get down the hall. So what hobbies have you? What did you What did you do hobby wise though? You're looking at them. Yeah. Lamps. Oh yeah. yeah. I was gonna. You I was wondering. Lamps. I was noticing all of them. I built that one. Which one? This one right there. With the guy on it? Yeah, I bought that. Uh, I bought that statue at an at a antique shop, and I thought, well, there's no reason why I can't make a lamp out of that. Yeah, that's yeah. cool. Looks nice. Remember all these. I like the thin one. Team's got That's, a few. That is a peg lamp. Peg. Yeah, because it looks like a peg leg. 
I it's love a farm with a pig on it. See, the people, the reason people need that was everybody had a candle stand. Yeah. yeah. All you had to do was buy. That's a matching pair. Yeah. So you, that lamp just sets into a candlestick. Yeah. Oh. It's got a pig on the end. Oh, that's very it's called cool. a pig lamp. And it looks like a candle, only it's yeah. done with fuel. That's very cool. Any of those Aladdins? I know Aladdin. No, I collect Aladdin lamps. I've got the Corinthian pattern. Oh, very cool. Uh, there is an Aladdin in here. But I'll guarantee you this. I have had one sitting on that, on that uh, where that Jefferson lamp is right there. Oh, there is, there's more back here. They're everywhere. Oh, oh wow. We've got lights, too. That one's pretty. Did you do the, this one, too? My wife bought yeah. the frames. I bought it. the shade. Beautiful. That's back in that corner there. That's we bought together. Oh, wow. Right there. Yeah, yeah, we'll back there, too. Yep, me and you. Oh, look at this hanging one. It's gorgeous. It's dusted. It's gorgeous, though. Everything needs dust. I love the chains. Very cool. That uh, globe on that one with the, with the dragon. Yeah. That's it a, looks Japanese. Is that what it is? No, it's Baccarat. Baccarat. It's French glass. Oh, very oh. cool. <laughs> French glass. Did you get it in France? Nope. <laughs> nope. Then back there is a picture of all my wife's siblings, including my wife. And there's color in it, too. Yeah. That's cool. That's Where's the, that's what's the house? Picture. That's a painting. Isn't that's, that's my wife's family's house. Oh, in Virginia. West Virginia. West Virginia. Mm -hmm. Very cool. So did you go, is that where you go to vacation in West Virginia or did you travel any at all? No, we've been to, we've been to uh, Phoenix a couple of times. Yeah. Uh, you like it out there too hot? Well, I, I, I wouldn't want to live there. No, I wouldn't be like it. I did like, I enjoyed visiting it. Flagstaff. Yes. Did you go to Flagstaff while you were no. there? No. Sedona, we've, we've been oh, as Sedona. far as Sedona. Sedona's beautiful. Yeah, beautiful, but... Yeah. There again. Mind you, the cowboys, because of all the orange rocks and the mountains and everything. Yep. Yeah. You always saw it on the TV, and then to see it in person was really neat, I thought. We went, um, when Sam was six months old, we went to Washington, D.C. Mm. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, Washington, D.C. is a nice... I wouldn't I, want to live there either, but nope, I like going nope. there and visiting. I thought the White House tour was a joke, but... Cause we waited for two i was a kid and we waited for two hours in line and then you got to walk through the white house and they had they had like a pathway with rope roped off and mm -hmm. then they had the rugs rolled back mm -hmm. and they're like this is the red room and everything in there is red and this is the blue room and this is the white room and i'm like and this is where the president eats breakfast but we got it all closed off right now because he's in there eating breakfast right now and i'm thinking it's lunchtime why is he in there eating breakfast? And you couldn't even see it. And it was, I think we walked through it in about half an hour. And I'm thinking, as a kid, I'm like. You waited longer than it took that tour. I waited two hours for a half hour tour of nothing. I could have gone done something else, you know. But the, Washington was really nice. I really enjoyed Washington. Reagan was president at the time. So that was cool. I didn't get a meeting, but. I was always interested in my brother was interested in flying as far as that goes but i was always interested in it i never i never took lessons and things but i had a friend that did wow and uh, did you go up with him oh yeah we flew to uh, uh three of us flew to uh, uh from angola the airport outside of angola yeah to uh indianapolis to watch time trials nice yeah the Indy 500 time trials? Mm -hmm. Wow, so you're into the Indy 500 racing. Oh, I was... Are you I into was, NASCAR too? No. I, I like to watch the races, but I'm not I'm not knowledgeable about them. Okay. I'm Back in, in, in uh, uh, the time we went was when you had uh, fellas like Jack McGrath and Bill Yukovich. Okay. Uh not real familiar with them, but no, somebody they, will be. They've, they've, they're all gone. Okay. 
Uh, what, can, what type of style of car did they race? Just Indy 500s. Okay. Yeah, both of them. Uh, Jack McGrath, he died at a dirt track. Yeah. But uh, Jokovic died over there in Annapolis. Okay. Were he, they from around here? Or? Hmm? You liked them because they were good drivers? No, or they no I was around? interested in what they did. Okay. Yeah. Very cool. So what got you into cars? Well, like I said, that's kind of a buyer's tree. Just the whole, your whole family was into cars? Well, my dad went to the Sweeney School of uh, automotive, automotive uh, Repair. Okay. But he was, he wound up being a machinist, which he dearly loved. Yeah. He worked for the Aero Corporation, like I told you earlier. Mm -hmm. uh, his clock number was number two. Hmm. Really and the fellow that was number one was the driver for J.C. Markey. His name was uh, Red Amsball. Okay. So my dad worked for Markey before the Arrow was ever the Arrow. Right. And uh, it was a Brian Screw machine. And then he went from that to Eco. And I have an air compressor out there that was made by the Eco company. Very cool. While he ran, ran that. Is it, does it still work? Oh, well, it, it, it's just sitting there. Okay. It, it doesn't, it's not hooked up to a motor or anything. Okay. It's just a one Probably, piston. Yeah. Something they built. Yeah, well, something they built, and I, I had a chance to pick it up, and I did. Very cool. Because it was something my, my dad had worked at. Yep. But, uh, oh, yeah. I said to my dad one time, I said, did you run scrap when you worked there? No. Nope. He says, if you ran scrap, they'd go out and hire somebody that wouldn't. <laughs> you know what they wound up with down there? A oh. whole department that reworked scrap. Oh. Yeah. So they were redoing everything. That's very cool. That's innovative. That's what it takes. I mean, if you don't, you're right. Because people are going to scrap that out. Somebody else is going to use it for something. Might as well save that money. That's smart. And now a lot of a lot of companies do that now, but it all started, you know, back in the day. Well, my dad, b before the Second World War, he got the shakes, mm. and my mother couldn't pour any more than half a cup of coffee, mm. and uh, because he'd he'd spill it if she did, mm. and um, they sent him down to uh, at that time a new. Hospital out of Rexville, and yeah, uh, I was just short of Cleveland. Wow. And uh, uh, I'm not saying it didn't help him, but they didn't put him on his feet. Doc Kittridge, who saved my life, put him on his feet. Wow. Good doctor. And, and he worked seven days a week during the Second World War. Wow. But prior to that, he went back to work at the Arrow. Before the Second World War, prior to the Second World War, and they, they put him in a tool crib, hmm. passing out tools, you know, that were needed to do a job. And his boss, who had been with him from the beginning of, of the Aero Corporation, it was John Earlston, and he take, he came to the, my dad and he said, "Those guys have been down there for three days." and they haven't made a good piece yet. He said, I want you to go down there and see what you can do. Yeah. So he says, I went down there. Of course, my dad was good at reading a print, so on and so forth, so on. Didn't go past a, a, the seventh grade in school. Yeah. And uh, he says, I made, he, he says, I got my first piece in, in a half an hour. He says, I ran some more and, he, and they passed. And he says, I went, got a hold of my boss and said, you get you somebody you're down there to run that. He says, it's ready to go. So he got a guy down there and he says, you tell him how you ran that. And you show him. And, and when he got done, dad said, I was headed back for a tool crib. John Earlson says, you sit right there and watch him. <laughs> but if it was anything my dad loved to do, it was it was being a machinist, and he'd talk about it. I mean, 
to the point when my oldest daughter's first husband worked for uh, Mark and Sprocket up there in Montpelier, and we'd sit around and talk. Uh, I, you know, I'd ask him about stuff. Finally, he got. He says, "When did you work at a machine shop?" I said, "I'm a buyer who never worked for the Arrow." What's it, huh? I didn't. I had, I had my dad, my brother, my uh, son worked there. I had uh, cousins that worked there. I had three cousins. I had a niece that worked there, but I never worked one day at the Arrow. Hmm. No. Nope. Where'd you work, grow up as an adult? Well, I started out by telling you where I worked as a child, and, mm -hmm. and, and I, I started pumping gas, and then I wanted to learn a trade. Right. So I went over to the Lindsay Motor Sales at that time, which is now Estel Motor Sales. Yeah. And uh, wanted to know if, if they were hiring anybody. They, yeah, they needed somebody for a body man. Well, what experience have you had? I, well, I hadn't had any. So they wound up hiring a fellow that had gone to school. Yeah, the body work. And yeah, and uh, they took a chance on him. It didn't work out. And I went back and, and asked him if they were still interested in me learning. So for six months, all I got to do, and I, I stuck it out because I figured they just trying to see whether I was serious or not right all i got to do was sand oh boy fun uh-huh <laughs> you know what i didn't like it then and i still don't today <laughs> but it's still one of the most important things there is on body work yeah yeah prior to getting pain if you, if you don't get that where it belongs the pain will never look it ain't good. gonna look good no that's true Nope. So you got real good at it. Well, I started in 1957. Yeah. And how long did you work there? I worked there uh, till I I bought a uh, a Pepsi truck and ran that for two and a half years. Huh. Then I went back to the body work. And I've been there since. Wow. So you did body work most of your adult mm -hmm. life? Wow. Mm -hmm. That's cool. For yeah. the same person? No, I worked for um I I worked for Lindsay and I worked for Ryder and I I built this sh shop out here for myself. Oh. Huh. I'll um very cool. What was your favorite car to work on body wise? You must have worked on a bunch of bodies over your life. What was your favorite one? I did a, I was trying to find it. I think I picked up the wrong one. Oh, you're going to show us. Cool. Um, yeah, I picked up the wrong one. I love this guy with the little. Look at the tail. Mm -hmm. Look how strong that is. I did this car for Joe Brand. And it made it to a calendar? Yep. Very cool. No, that's not the one. Mm -hmm. Well, idiot, what'd you do? That's not the one either. <laughs> Well, I may not be able to show you. That's okay. Oh, wait a minute. Here's another one. Oh, this is Ace Radiator. The weird part about it is the calendar wound up in Ryder Body Shop that I used to work for. Wow. And it was the car that you'd done a body on. Yeah, I did it what for... What kind of car was it? 1930 Packard Patrician Convertible. Wow. 1930 pack. 53. Very cool. So that's how you kind of got into cars, because you were working on the bodies of all of them, I'd say. Well. 
What was your cool best car that you've ever owned? I've owned a lot of them. What was your favorite? Well, it's still out there in the, in the East Bay. A 37 cord. Mm. If you give me a couple of minutes, I'll show you a picture of one. Okay. I'll show you right here, as a matter of fact. All right. You want this? Yep. Okay. You and your wife can both look at these if you want. put a flyer in there. Mm -hmm. Here's mine. This is a serial number. Mm -hmm. This is the engine number. They didn't get my body number, but it's a Beverly with a bustle trunk, which is an afterthought. Which, really? Here's a cord fed. Ooh. This is a single seater. This is the dashboard. Yeah. You can check the engine oil from the dashboard. Wow. See how much oil's in the engine. That's pretty impressive. I own one like this. Wow. Like that right there. Oh my when I was 18. That's gorgeous. That's nice. I blew the engine. So I was 18. <laughs> you were revving it. No, I was going. Here, here's, here's, oh, here's what I have. That's a rear view of it. Of the car you have now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very nice. This is a Phaeton sedan. See, this this is a sportsman or the single seater I told you about. It's See, pretty. there's no quarter glasses. Man, that's pretty. Those are nice. And what year were these built? 36, 37? 36 and 37. The only year they were were in business, right? Only half, only six months in 37, and they went bankrupt. Wow. Now, what's this right here? What's the crank? To crank up the headlights. Oh. One on the right and one on the left. <laughs> See these headlights? Yeah. Hidden headlights? They're hidden. Yeah. And the, no. the Duesenbergs have the big... The big ball headlights, don't they? They're not hidden. The Duesenbergs. Oh, I, I had a picture of one there. Yeah. Well, this was supposed to be a baby, a baby Duesenberg. Okay. Gordon Berg is the one that designed that. I love them. I love the way they hid those those lights. Well, they had step-down design. Mm-hmm. You would notice something else. What? There's no hood. Door hinges. Oh yeah. yeah, it's real clean. Yeah, no, no. That's how they board. all were, huh? Yeah. No running board. Wow. No. So why wasn't there a running board? Because you didn't need one. They were sat so low. Yeah. Wow. Very cool. They're pretty. Well, they're beautiful. Yeah, they are. I wonder why they only lasted a couple of years. They were probably pretty expensive. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. That one I showed you that was mine? Yeah. Sold for over $3,000. Wow. My my grandfather's How did stout. you pick one up? Well, my brother drove, drove one back, just like this one right here. This is a, this is a uh, Beverly, only it's not supercharged. And that's what got me into cords. Hmm. I've owned two of them. Matter of fact, I've owned I bought two others. No, I bought three others. I parted one out. Yeah. Sam, ha Sam. Ever go to over to the? Oh yes. Auburn Court Duesenberg. Oh Museum? yes. Yeah. Oh yes. Yes, indeed. The bad part about was I could have bought a. Uh, in '57, I could have bought a. Uh, Westchester sedan yeah. which would you rather have had that well I wouldn't have had all the work I got 
Is that for twenty five hundred dollars? Oh, yeah. But I didn't have the money. There's Jay Leno. He yeah. must have a cord. Oh yeah, he's got a cord. Mm -hmm. It's a, it's a supercharged Westchester. Mm. Here's uh, you know who that is. Nope. Who is it? Flew over the Atlantic. Oh. Lady. Um. Can't say her name now. Yeah, I'm sure it says in there. Amelia uh, Earhart. Yeah, Amelia Earhart. This is Tom Mix. And this is his one he wrecked at a... At oh, a, boy. Yep. Oh, did it? Mm -hmm. Wow. That's really not good. Yep. Here's a Westchester. This is what a Westchester looks like from That's the back. That's what you wanted to get? That's... <laughs> or could have got for I could. Yep. Yep. Yep, didn't do it. <laughs> well, we're got we're getting back into the older stuff there. Yeah. It's history, and um, there's another picture of a Westchester. Well, yeah. Well, you see a lot of the Westchesters driving around. Mm -hmm. I think. Yeah, some of them. Well, they didn't put the Bissell trunk out till. 37 mm. and that it, it, I'll be honest with you the Westchester is a better looking car you think because oh, yeah. it, it doesn't have the yeah. trunk or what yeah the, the, the trunk was an afterthought yeah. see they made a band <laughs> and they put it in a hole of a Westchester and that's all lead lead mm -hmm. <laughs> the band is yeah that's crazy <clears throat> and why would they make it out of lead? Because it was easy to. No, no, to, they made it out of steel, but to, to, to. Get it to bend. No, to get it to to form it. Oh. It's lead. Okay. If I had, if when I was stripped, you could see, that's all. There's nothing wrong with it. Mm -hmm. I mean, that lead's been there since 1937. Yeah. It's still there. Yeah. It will be unless Russ gets in behind it. Right. The lead paint you're talking about. Hmm? Lead paint? No. They're just... Body lead. Oh. See, there, nobody uses that anymore. No, they used fiberglass. They used to use lead, huh? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I remember When that. I started out, there was no such thing as Bondo. Hmm. No. You melt lead and put it right down in and sand it out. I can lead a panel for you and show you how to do it. That's awesome. That's an old trade. It's one that's gone. Yeah, I'd like to learn how to do that sometime. I would. You yeah. show me? Yeah, nothing to it. Sweet. I would love that. Just now, to know. As a matter of fact, both sides on my top they ground that too much of the lead out and they filled it with primer and it all cracked. Yeah. I re-leaded all that <laughs> on both sides. Awesome. Can we see it? Well, can you not get out there? It's, it's in primer now. Uh -huh. You can't see what I've done. Oh. Can I see the primer product? Yeah. Okay. Very cool. I would have liked to see your work though. Here, I can get that for you. There it comes. Oop. Wow. Oh my. It's bigger than I thought. Oh, maybe it's jacked up a little bit. Is this well, it's, it's up on stands, yeah. Look how pretty this is. Now this has a fat needle to it because I'm, I've got to put the engine and the transmission in it. When, when we get some dry weather where the humidity's down, I've got to reprime these fenders and this. This is a transmission cover. Oh, very cool. You know where they the made transmission a, is? Yeah. I know what a trans... Where it is? I don't know where right it is. Right behind the front bumper. 
Oh, because the front wheel drive? Mm -hmm. Oh. Engine sits in backwards. Nice. That's different. Is that the court? The Duesenbergs aren't like that, are they? Nope. Why is this wheel well so big? Because they, did they get bigger tires than that, or is that I've got it bigger? jacked up. Okay. It would normally sit up in here somewhere. Mm -hmm. Very cool. It's pretty. Now, where did you lead the front things? This is where your headlights pop out at. Nice. Right there. Sharp. That look good. See this? It's gonna be blue this like the one you showed me. No, no. Black. Oh, black. black. See that black on that cowl? Yeah. That's what color you're gonna paint this? Oh yes, it was black when I got it. Oh, very cool. This is what I was telling him. This is all lead in here. Black will show everything, you're right. There's the front scoop thing. So yeah, the drill's hanging on the wall over there. Well, Here's my front the wall. They're all ready to go. I gotta finish sanding them. Yeah, that's where the headlights would hide. Yeah. And what were the two holes back here? That's where the exhaust comes out for a supercharger. Oh, oh, you got this thing. It, what's that? Is that the transmission? Nope, that's a transmission out of my daughter's car. car. Okay. That's a 350 for a Chevrolet. Very nice. Yeah. Very cool. And there's all your headlight bezels, and mm. there's the ones that flip up. Very cool. What Now, what are these pieces? Those go in between the doors. So, no chrome, just all painted black, right? Or maroon in interior. Well, I can show you. I can show you hubcaps. No hubcaps, yeah. You said no chrome. You well, got I was just asking. A lot of a lot of them older cars had a lot of chrome on them. You want the inner headlights? Oh, yeah. That would. That's the mechanism that pops up. Mm -hmm. Very cool. And that was done with a crank. Here, let me yep. get that out of your way. I'll get it. Mm -hmm. go. That's a full sheet of drywall he's moving. Two half sheets. Oh yeah, those are sharp. Look they like got, a spaceship. They got a little dirty. Yeah, but look how look at those. Wow. Club member made them Here, back in the fifties. Hold on, uh, four. Yeah, those look like spaceships. I bet you it really set that off with that black and that. I've and never seen any rims like that before. I got show chrome on the bumpers and stuff. Oh, do they? Okay. Yeah, that's the reason. What's this? That's outer constant velocity U joint. Outer constant velocity U joint. Yeah. That's because it's front wheel drive? Mm hmm. There's yeah. four of them in there. Wow. There's two inners and two outers. Wow. That's different. I, yeah. wonder, I wonder. And it must not have balanced right or something because they don't make cars like that anymore. So. Well, I said to Bill Ginner, who was an engineer, I said, why don't they make front wheel drive cars? Is a too expensive to make. What are you driving today? Front wheel drive car. So why did I don't understand? Well, it's just like anything else. If you produce a lot of it, the cheap the cost goes down. That's true. Yep. Yep. A lot of people wanted rear wheel drive, but it's it's better on ice. How do you know that? Rear, rear wheel, I think, is better on ice. But very cool. And you got a nice shop. Well, it's a little cluttered. Uh, you, did you paint in this shop too? Or did you oh, take yeah. it somewhere to paint? I painted I painted a good mine uh semi uh tractors, cabs, yeah. Just cabs things. Very cool. Wow. A lot of fun. She will be black. <laughs> this one. He's, he loves that plant. Oh, yeah. He's the only one. I'm like, well, then I'm misleading somebody. And that is 
one of the worst things you can do is to mislead somebody. Well, how can that be? Well, if I mislead somebody and, and, and destroy their soul, I'm, I'm responsible. God's not going to hold that other individual. Well, why not? Well, because I'm the one that I'm the one that meant to misled them. You can't do that. So we know that the the the, mur murder, uh, the murder of animals and the blood of animals are not going to save us. Because why? There didn't have to be a change in a person's life. They could just go on like they always gone. You do like they always got. Oh, I, I had to be the best of his father. He, he lost that as far as that part is concerned. But as far as changing his inner being, no. So along comes our Heavenly Father and sends his only begotten Son out here to do what? To show us how to love God, how to praise Him, how to worship Him, how to thank Him for the many blessings He's bestowed upon us and the many privileges He has granted us, and to serve Him. Well, how do we serve God? Well, we serve God by various ways, but one of the best ways we can serve Him, we have, which we had in our Sunday school lesson this morning, is to love His creations. Now, do jerk. We're talking about our Creator Himself. Do jerk. He will be there. Well, I've been watching television and they're talking, they're talking about this. It's going to be destroyed. Do you think that I don't? Do you think God's going to destroy this earth? If He's going to be here? Absolutely not. And what are we going to have to find us another place for one of these things? One of these days, God's going to just do away with this earth. He hung this baby right where he is today, thousands and thousands of years ago. And it's still here. We have misused it, as we had in our lesson this morning. We have not treated it by kind action. We've taken advantage of it. We've destroyed it. We've used it to our advantage, for our pleasure, not for, not for God, not to help save us. But uh, right there you are. Verse 5. And to them that was given that they should not kill them, but that, in other words, those, you're not supposed to kill those that don't believe, don't have a seal of God in their head. But that they should torment five months, and their torment was for as the torment of a scorpion when he striketh a man. You got your choice. We can either follow our Heavenly Father or we can follow man and earth. And if you follow man and earth, that's all we're going to have. If we follow our Heavenly Father to the best of our ability, are we perfect? And no, I'm not. I know that. And the best part about that is, he knows I'm not. He knows my every thought. First time I heard that and believed that, I shook him. This was Arvin Byro's story and his 37 chord. Hope you like this sort of stuff. If you do, hit that Take subscribe bag. button. Take Consider joining our Patreon. We'll see you next time. Her mama and papa used to go. Let's sing all them songs from a long time ago.